what's going on everyone i've got multiple requests for this video you guys want to see these two bikes side by side up close so um this is the hemiway cobra over here and this is the wicked freedom they're both full suspension e-bikes i guess a lot of people might be trying to decide between them so i thought i'd do a quick video before the sun went down show you both up close just talk about them a little bit and maybe it'll help you decide so let's take a look all right here they are this is the wicked freedom e-bike full suspension e-bike costs two thousand dollars over here, the Hemiway Cobra, also a full suspension e-bike. This one costs, I think, $2,400 right now. And although they are similar in a lot of ways, there's some differences too that I wanna point out about each bike. Let's start over here on the Cobra bike. So the first thing to notice on this is it's got bigger tires. It's got 4.8 inch tires, 26 by 4.8. So it comes with larger tires. They have a pretty aggressive tread pattern on them. You have an RST guide front fork. It's a nice, smooth, good fork. I like the fork. It's also got hydraulic brakes. I'm working with uh, Tektro hydraulic brakes. Nice brakes. I changed out the grips. It did have really nice rubber grips, but I switched it out. I wanted to have a twist throttle instead of the thumb that came on it, so I changed out the grips. And this bike, I mean, it's got a fantastic suspension. It's really soft, and it's very adjustable as well. It's an air shock, and there's a little air nozzle right there you hook your compressor well i wouldn't use an air compressor i have a little tiny uh, hand pump that i use to adjust this to the right level and you can kind of dial in the suspension for your weight make it a really nice ride it's a it's a great suspension that's got to be the overwhelming thing i can say about this cobra bike fantastic suspension and the tires look so cool because they're so huge on there comes with this this is the king cobra paint job it's like a carbon fiber weave style look on there it's pretty cool looking i mean it's an aggressive cool looking bike so some really good suspension components on this bike some big fat tires let's step over to the wicked freedom really quick again full suspension but the suspension is probably i guess not as high dollar it's a mozo front fork i would say the rst guide fork is probably a better fork and then you've got a adjustable rear shock here as well but it's not an air shock you just twist it to adjust it and the although it does give you full suspension it's not nearly as squishy soft as the cobra cobra definitely has the better suspension so each bike has things about it that are kind of where the company spent their money i guess to cut to the point of these two bikes on the cobra you can tell they really set out to create a fantastic off-road suspension and the power is okay it's adequate power 750 watt rear hub motor peaks at like a thousand watts over here in the Wicked Freedom, I feel like this company really set out to give you the power. This thing has so much power. Yeah, the suspension's okay. It could probably be a little bit better, but you can change that out if you wanted to change forks or you wanted you know, put a different shock in there, you could. But they were geared towards power delivery on this bike. It is incredibly powerful. Probably one of the most powerful bikes I've ever been on. It's a 60 volt battery, 20 amp hour, has a 40 amp controller, which goes back to this, 1,000 watt rear hub motor peaking over 2,000 watts. So if you do the math, 60 volt times 40 amp controller, it's like 2,400 watts, but the motors aren't 100% efficient, so you lose some of that. But it's still you know, peaking over 2,000 watts. I regularly see this peak over 2,000 watts. Those are really the two main differences on these bikes. You got the fantastic suspension over here on the Cobra, and you've got the fantastic power over on the Wicked Freedom. They're both probably gonna get very similar ranges. I did a range test on the Wicked Freedom and just riding it aggressively like I normally would ride it, I got about 37 miles, I think it was, on the bike. I tested the, the Zebra bike, not the Cobra, but it's the same exact drivetrain, same exact battery size and everything. And on the Zebra, I think I got 40 miles on it, riding it aggressively like I would normally ride it. So they're, they're right there. You know, you, when you get these bikes, you're gonna ride them probably with a lot of throttle use and you're, probably going to be in that 35 40 mile mark for your range now if you're going to put it in pedal assist one never use the throttle yeah you might get closer to 60 but most people i think are going to use the throttle on these bikes so two main differences suspension and power on these bikes this one does have fatter tires you got the 4.8 tires on this one over on the wicked freedom you got the 26 by 4 inch fat tires the freedom does come with the rack and fenders included the um, Cobra does not, and there are no rack and fenders to buy. They don't make them for this bike yet. Don't have that option over here, and these come standard on the bike, and you also get 
you know, a taillight built in as well. I would say the Wicked definitely has a more upright ride position because you've got these really, really tall BMX style handlebars, which are about 48 inches off the ground. They're really tall. I changed up the handlebars on this bike recently in my last video. If you haven't seen that, I changed out the screen, changed out the handlebars, make it a little bit taller ride. I put this aftermarket screen on. Oh, what's the name of it? KD986, I think is the number on the screen. Gave me a couple miles per hour speed increase. It'll go 28 miles an hour pretty easily now. This bike is way faster. I mean, it goes close to 40 miles an hour. I can hit 38 on this thing pretty easily. If you hit a downhill, you're going 40 plus. I've had it as high as 42 and just kind of said that's enough. Might have been able to go faster on a steeper downhill. The Wicked Freedom also has hydraulic brakes. They're not Tektra though. They are Star Union. They work just as well. I've had Star Union brakes before on bikes. I, I like them actually. They're one of the better braking systems that I've used anyway. I don't know if they're expensive or not. I never tried to buy them aftermarket, but they work well. I like the brakes on this one. Now I think the Hemiway Cobra bike has a more refined kind of put together appearance to it. It looks a little higher end, I'll say, than the Wicked Freedom. But to be fair, this is a prototype of the Wicked Freedom. This is not the finished product. This is their prototype bike that they've lent to me to, to do videos on. So the finished product might look a little sharper than this one with the, you know, th these graphics are just stickers stuck on there and everything going forward, this production bike, all the graphics and everything are laid under the paint and it probably looks a little bit sharper than this bike does. When they delivered this bike to me, it already had over 400 miles on it. So there's some little marks and scratches and you know, it wasn't a brand new bike like this bike is. This is a bike that only has like 40 miles on it. I'll turn the screens on for you real quick. Again, this isn't the stock Hemiway screen. This is an upgraded one that I added recently. KD986 keeps all the same programming and everything. Just gives you a little bit of a speed increase, takes away that speed limit for you and gives you a color screen. I'll turn on the Wicked Freedom screen for you too. I've used this one many times. This is the LCD 8H screen that I like a lot and have it on my own personal bike. But you can see here, so a fully charged battery, I'm at 67.2 volts right now. And I mean, put that into the math. So 67 volts times amps is watts. 67 times the 40 amp controller is sending a lot of power to this giant motor back here. And that's certainly the standout feature on this bike, just power for days in this thing. But I've changed out the grips on this bike as well. You can see same exact ones that I put over there on the Cobra bike. I like these round rubber grips with the locking rings. I think they look better and they, they feel a lot better in your hand and I like how they don't move. But I'm not sure what else in particular you guys wanna see about these bikes. Drop it in the comment section. I'll answer the questions if I can or do some follow-up videos to show you more about them. But both solid bikes, I think you could be happy probably with either one. I guess you just have to decide if you're looking more for the fancy suspension of the Cobra or just the raw power of the Wicked Freedom. See if I can just give you some more up close looks at things here. There's your rear rack and tail light on the Freedom bike. The 20 derailleur, 1128 on the rear cassette. I believe this is a, this prototype is a 48 tooth. I believe the productions have a 52. So you should have plenty of pedal. There's your rear suspension. Again, you could probably change that out. I might, I might try changing it and uh, just showing you guys how to do that. It's not that hard really. You just pop a couple bolts out and cut these little shims to, to fit right size. See if that changes the suspension any. There's your seat. Big battery pack on this bike. It actually hangs out the side because it's a 60 volt, 20 amp hour. Try to get a shot of, see how it hangs over the frame here. It's so, it sticks out so far. Big, massive battery pack on this thing. That big, huge thousand watt. I think it's a hang tie. The one with the metal gears inside. Comes with headlight, of course. Pretty bright. 100 lumen, I think, on the production models. Over here, 750 watt. This is a Bafang. Somebody was asking me about the codes on it. It is, says G10TBS 48 volt 26750 on their Bafang motor. Again, 1428 Shimano Altus. I think this is a 44. Definitely have more pedal in the Freedom than this one. 
Batteries integrated into the frame on this bike. 48 volt, 20 amp hour. Still really big battery pack. But everything is kind of contained on this bike. You know, the battery's integrated in, controllers hiding inside here. But it's really not that hard to get to the controller. I've opened them up before and looked inside. 22 amp controller on this bike. It's easier to get from this side. You just take all these little screws out, plate pops off, and it's right there. All the wiring's right there. It's really not hard to access, but you couldn't, you can only fit a, so big of a controller in there. And I don't know of any aftermarket controllers for him, anyways. Been talking to a company that might come up with that option. Stay tuned for that. Headlight on the Cobra, but no tail light. Just kind of a clip on battery one that they give you. No front rack options on Cobra, but no front rack option here either. No mounting points on there. And I switched out the seat on this bike to this one. The other seat was kind of thin, a little bit hard. So I put a thicker seat on there and Combined with that suspension, it's a really nice ride. There you go, what do you think? Which one's your favorite? Drop it in the comments. Let me know your questions, I'll do my best to answer. And also too, if you know someone that would be interested in e-bike content, please share my channel with them. Share some videos with them. Would appreciate that, that help. I think that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching.